okay, I'm going to think about my graph, and I'm going to shift it, what was it, up or down? Yeah. Down one spot everywhere. Really, what you got to think about is just the vertex of this thing. If I shift down the vertex and redraw that graph, it's going to be in the right spot. So what I'm thinking is, here's my original, I need to shift this down one spot. So right here, I'm going to take this, I'm going to shift it from the origin down one, I'm going to redraw my line, or my graph. That's how G of X would look. The original is right here, my basic graph shape that I have on the board. I've shifted everything down one spot. Should we have to be okay with that so far? Okay. Let's try one more, I'll have you do it. I want you to make sure that the square root does not go over the 2, okay? Make sure it does not go over the 2. So draw your original, your basic graph shape, and then tell me and show me what happens when I add 2 to the end of it, okay? Do that on your paper right. Hopefully you're starting to memorize these shapes. What shape is this? The square root? Yeah, that's that, that weird one, half parabola on the side. Kind of looks like that from the square root, right? So this starts at the origin, the original one, just goes like that. That's f of x. No surprises there, right? Y'all have that on your paper, right? The next one, g of x, says I'm taking that and I'm shifting it somehow. Can you tell me what that plus 2 does to your function? Does it go right or left at all? No. Just taking that, it's moving it up two notches, and we're going to redraw the whole thing. You with me? Okay. By the way, do I even need to give this to you at all? If I just gave you g of x, would you still be able to draw the same thing I'm about to draw? You just take away the original. You say, oh, this would be my original right there. And then I'm just adding 2 to that. I'm going up. In the future, that's what we're going to do. So it says I'm going to start. I have originally started here. That's my basic graph shape. This shifts it up twice, up two times. Draw the same thing. Make sure you label them because we need to know which one's f of x and which one's g of x. How many will feel okay with this right now? Good. We're going to stop there today. We're going to talk about a little bit of homework. I need to make sure you see something. All right. So uh, yesterday we talked about a couple things. We talked about basic graph shapes that we have up here. We know our straight line is our x. We know our parabola is our x squared. It's kind of like the u shape. We know our v is our absolute value. Straight lines make straight lines. And we have our square root of x, which kind of looks like the square root itself, just kind of curved over. And then we talked about two things, uh, two vertical types of shifts. We have the up where we're adding k, and we have the minus where uh, that means we're going down. We're shifting the, shifting the graph down. Now, we did figure out like a couple days ago on, uh, on Monday, we could also do, besides a vertical shift, we could do a horizontal shift left and right. Do you remember doing that as well? But it wasn't after, the, it wasn't after one of these, these functions. It was actually within the function. So when we talk about a horizontal shift, a left-right, as a matter of fact, I think it was in this one, where we had that plus 2 on the inside of our square root. If you remember back from your notes on Monday, that's what we had. Well, here's the deal. If we add or subtract from the back end of a function like, like this or like this, Sure, it's going to shift it up or down because what's happening is you're doing one of the original functions like f of x and then you're tacking numbers onto it. And what that's doing is raising the value or lowering the value. That's moving it up or down. However, if we add or subtract within the function, and here's how that looks by the way. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like that, right? Because that, again, that's a vertical shift. We already covered that. If it's within the function, it looks like this. 
plus or minus k in there. And you know what, I'll use h so we, we get a different letter going on. k will leave that for the vertical. But that would be within the function. So when we looked at this the first time, we said, all right, what is this actually doing? If we looked at our, our square root of x from last time, we had the square root of x plus 2, what this is doing, and this is going to seem kind of, kind of backwards to you a little bit, because when, when we did this, uh, our vertical shift, and if you add k, it makes sense that it goes up, right? If you subtract k, it makes sense that it goes down. If you add h within the function, a lot of people are going to think, oh, you know what, if I add h, it goes to the right. That would actually kind of logically make sense, right? But it's kind of backwards to that, and here's why. What this is doing, if you think about this like a timeline, you think of a timeline with like zero in the middle. Our, our timeline has zero in the middle actually, right? Because we have AD and BC. We have uh, before and we have after. And, and that's kind of like a timeline for us. We have a zero right in the middle. If you think of this as a timeline, what this is doing is speeding up where your graph starts. So this would be slowing down where your graph starts. Does that make sense? So like if you were originally starting at zero and we're subtracting, you're starting later and you're starting later and you're starting later. If you're adding to it, you're actually starting earlier. You're making that graph start sooner. That means that this plus h is, isn't a shift to the right. It's actually a shift to the left. If you think about it like a timeline, that should make sense to you. Does that, does that, can you follow that? So it's, it's starting our graph sooner. So a horizontal shift, that's a shift to the left or the right. This happens when we add something within the function. Plus is going to go to the left, and minus is going to go to the right. And that's the way this works. So horizontal shift, if you add or subtract within the function, subtract within the function, it will shift left or right. And again, how do you tell? Well, it's either going to be f of x plus h, and so you say it's within that, the parentheses, or f of x minus h. Last time, if you didn't catch this the first time, what this does is it speeds up or it slows down your, your function. So if you're adding h to it, what that's doing is saying, oh, okay, I'm going to start this function a little bit sooner. This is moving it to the left. So this is a shift left of h units. Make sure you have that down, okay? The plus means left. Minus h, this says I'm taking, I'm kind of like I'm taking time away, starting later. This is going to be a shift right. H units. If you really want to think about it a different way, if the whole timeline thing doesn't make sense to you, here's really what you're doing mathematically. You're taking an original number that you, you would normally plug in, you're adding something to it, making that value bigger, right? You're plugging that in, that means that this is going to start the same height, only sooner. For instance, uh, if you take out, uh, let's, let's do an example here. If you want to look at this one,
if I look at this one, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you this graph and uh, we're going to graph this first and we're going to shift. I'll show you why this actually happens. I'll explain to you why that plus 2 means to the left. So first thing I want you to identify, is the plus 2 within the function or after the function? What do you think? If it's within the parentheses or within the absolute value, that's within the function. So here, this one is different than, say, if I would have done this. Check this one out. Do you see the difference where the 2 is? That 2, what would this 2 be? That would be an uh, sure. This 2 is actually within the function. That's going to be a shift to the either left or right. We're going to determine that. So when we're graphing these, first thing we got to know is our original, our basic graph shape. What is the basic graph shape up here? I think it's on the board as well. What is that one? V. So we're going to draw the V. And I'll make sure I label that f of x. Let's see this one. Where should this one move? Should this move to the right? Well, I know it's, it's horizontal, so it's either left or right. Is it going to move to the right or to the left? What do you think? Left. Definitely to the left. How many spots? Two. So remember, we can think about the vertex here. If we're thinking about our origin as the vertex, we're going to move this left two spots and redraw it from that point. Here's how you can think about why this thing moves to the left and not the right. Are you ready for it? Here's a, like a mathematical example about why, not a timeline example about why. Listen, what do you have to plug in in order to get a height of zero for this function? What gives you, what gives you zero out? Zero. Zero. I plug in zero, I get out zero. Does that make sense? What would give you zero out of this thing? If I plug in negative 2, I get out 0, right? Not, not positive 2, not, not that. Well, if I plug in negative 2, I get out the same height. So what this says is this graph is starting sooner. I would normally plug in 0 to get out 0 for this one, right? But in order to get out the same height, I'm plugging in negative 2. That's two spaces to the left. So to get the same height that I would normally get for this function, I'm having to plug in two spaces less than that. In order to get the same height out of this function, that I got from this function, I'm having to plug in two spaces to the left of that. Does that make sense to you? So to get out of zero, I plug in zero, but to get out of zero here, I need negative two. That means I move my entire graph two spaces to the left. How many people understood that? Okay, good. So this is one of the reasons why plus means to the left if we're horizontally shifting, or minus means to the right. Even though it looks kind of backwards, it does make sense mathematically because it's saying I'm starting my graph sooner rather than later. That's what's doing. That's what this is doing. Now, one question: We've done vertical shifts, we've done horizontal shifts, but we haven't done them at the same time. Do you suppose we can do these things at the same time? Yeah, we may as well, right? Let's see how that looks. Oh, if you need a title for this, let's call this combining shifts. <laughs> Just be careful how you say that. This is one of my favorite sections because of that word. It's just kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> 